Okay, so I, I wanted to start with this um, little quote from Jeff Sutherland, which um, I quite like. Um, and, and I think this is really where Holacracy has grown from, because um, the uh, founder of Holacracy, who we're going to hear from later, um, Brian, uh, Brian Robertson, this is Brian, uh, and this is Tom, they're the two uh, founders of Holacracy One. Um, and Brian actually uh, ran an agile software company um, and recognized that agile worked exceptionally well for software development, but he actually wanted his whole company to be agile. Um, and so started to work with how could he develop an operating system for the whole organization that would also be agile. Um, and of course, all of the problems that, um, that everybody finds with waterfall projects, etc., um, also get in the way when you're starting to look at how does this work in different departments such as HR, in uh, sales, in um, all the other aspects of running a whole company, um, including how, how does the board behave with that and what are their um, agile behaviours. Um, and so he designed this whole process by developing it in his own company. So it was an emergent process in itself. He didn't just think it up and, um, and project it onto the company. It was an emergent process in developing it. Um, and one of the, the, the things that came out quite strongly was that uh, people's behavior was not um, controlled by the leader. In fact, what it enabled was uh, a distributive authority throughout the organization where decisions were made at an appropriate level. Um, and the power is held by roles, not by people. So that's a big behavioral change, especially for those people um, who are used to having a lot of control in organizations. <clears throat> I was just saying to um, Andrew earlier that um, I actually tried to put this into one organization in the UK, and we did some training with um, a group of the executives and one of them said to me afterwards, this is going to work in so much as I can let go of control, isn't it, Fiona? And I said, yes, it is. And he said, then it's not going to work. I'm going to sabotage it. Because he didn't want to let go of control. Actually, do you mind if we ask questions as you, as you go? Um, have we got time for questions as we one, go? One quick one, and Fiona can repeat it for the microphone. Okay, I, I'm just wondering about the when you're dealing with people, you can talk about capability and competency. Yes. When you're talking about role, you can't. Right. So I'm, I'm just sort of just wondering yes. how we understand fit for the people in that role. Yes. So that's quite a, an in-depth question to answer in actual fact. So the question was, when you're talking about people, you can talk about capability and competency. When you're talking about role, you can't. And the way that this actually works is it divests the power to the role and then a person is put into that role who can fit that role. So you still have the, the need for capability and competency but uh, and people still get developed. It's a, it's a slightly different way of looking at it, looking at it from a different angle. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, I actually... Um, actually, I want to go back one. I missed something here. Uh, um, this was actually developed from um, Agile, Lean, and something called Integral Theory. Has anybody in this room heard of Integral Theory? Okay, so I don't come from an Agile background. I come from an Integral background. So I was actually, I work uh, with culture within organizations to help businesses to develop a culture that supports the brand. And I use something called Integral Theory to map the present culture to look at where they want to be and therefore look at how they need to get there. So I came at this from a need to find things that uh, I could work with, with Integral, and that's where I came from. Now, the interesting um, part of the name, Holacracy, a lot of people have said to me, where does that come from? Now, Integral Theory is older than Ken Wilber is, but Ken Wilber, who is an American who has been hailed as the foremost philosopher of our time, is the person who has pulled more of integral theory together and really made it well known than anybody else. Um, integral theory describes the world in a series of nested 
holons. Now, a holon is an interesting thing. So, if we take a holon, a, a letter is a holon. It's complete in its own right and also part of a greater whole. So, the letter A or the letter B uh, is a holon. Complete in its own right, also part of a greater whole, part of a word. That word is complete in its own right, also part of a greater whole, a phrase. That phrase is a whole on, complete in its own right, also part of a greater whole, a sentence. And so we could go up to having a, um, a paragraph, a chapter of a book, a whole book, a whole library of books, and each is complete in its own right and also part of a greater whole. And you could actually destroy the book, but the letters would still remain. They would always be complete in, your own, in their own right. Now, the world is actually made up of holons. If you look at your own body, you are a holon. You are complete in your own right and also part of this community. Complete in your own right, also part of another community for some of you, which is the OS. Complete in your own right, also part of this country. Complete in your own right, also part of Europe. And so the world is a series of nested holons. Whereas what we've actually um, started to, what we've actually been used to within businesses is a dominator hierarchy where somebody at the top actually makes everything work. Whereas in holons, everything works in conjunction and coordination as opposed to one uh, entity at the top trying to make everything work and trying to control everything. So <clears throat> that's where the name holarchy came from. And the interesting thing is that um, holons all have the same sort of structure. So if you're interested in looking at more of that, look up Ken Wilbur on the internet. Now, last uh, uh, sprint that you had, Sharon Constantin looked at the board as the radar of the ship, which holds the vision and sets the strategic direction. Um, and detail is what the management do. Um, and in fact, that's exactly the same with, uh, with holacracy, because the board is actually still the uh, radar on the ship. The, the way that holacracy works is there are units which are complete in their own right, which they call circles, which are also part of the greater whole. So the board actually sits on the edge. The greater whole that it is part of is the world at large, the commercial world at large. So the board is constantly sensing what's going on in the commercial world and setting the strategic direction for the company. From that perspective, it's no different to what um, to any other company into what um, Sharon was describing. However, where it gets more in, uh, slightly different is where you have the uh, general company circle here which has inside it other circles. So you may have a sales circle in this particular holacracy, you have a sales circle, you have an operations circle, um, and a development department. Now I picked out uh, some of the development work that's going on in Ordnance Survey, and said, well, within that development circle, you've got uh, solutions engineering going on, and that could be a circle. You've got business systems engineering on, that could be a circle and geospatial engineering going on, and that could be a circle. In fact, there are lots of other things going on as well, so there would be many, many circles. And somewhere along there, there would be marketing, somewhere along there, there would be um, uh, uh, HR, there would be all sorts of things in there. So that's just an example of how that would map across to a, a normal um, hierarchy within an organisation. <clears throat> The difference is that each of those circles is a self-organizing team. So the way that it works is this area here, which is the organization's purpose, is actually the pull factor. So whatever the organization's purpose is, is where the organization is going. Um, and at the other side, you're getting stuff done. Now, for those of you that are used to Agile, that will be very, very um, familiar. Um, the difference is that when you um, start to get the stuff done and you start to get the feedback from, um, from reality, you start to sense the tensions that are going on. There's a, a tension is basically a difference between where am I now and where do I want to be? What's the gap? So it may be that actually in order to get this next scrum done, we need 
something that we haven't got, and that would be attention. We've got to go and find that something that we haven't got. Or it may be the tension is there that um, we can see that there is a greater opportunity that we're not fulfilling, and that's a tension, and we need to actually uh, to voice that tension and say, okay, how do we bring that in? And that's actually what Brian has been describing in, in building this, um, this whole series. And those, from a tactical perspective, are processed via tactical meetings, which lead to clear work, to projects, um, to actions, um, and, and they get executed. And that, in turn, comes back into, we've got stuff done, and that will lead to, and what next? What's the next tension? Where Agile didn't work, as Brian uh, Robertson was putting this together, didn't work for his larger organization, was that it was very, very good at small, tight projects, very good at software development. But in terms of then running an organization as a whole, it didn't allow for changing of the rules if you needed to change the rules. Um, it didn't allow for those things. So he started to bring in some other types of structures as well. Um, so he brought in processed governance meetings, um, which give a clear structure in terms of distributed authority. So the governance is about the structure, whereas the tactical is about the, the work. But they're processed in a similar way that distributes the authority down to the right level within the organization via those circles. So <clears throat> let's get on to see what Brian has to say about all of this. Let's keep fingers crossed that this is going to work. So, so, Brian, it's lovely to uh, see you again. Um, God has this is both an 